Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna talk about another case that is absolutely disgusting. Ex-nanny sentenced after sexually abusing 11-year-old in her care and having his baby. The victim's family said Mary Samari moved into the family's home as a live-in nanny and was treated like family until they discovered Maori had been having sex with their young son. I'm gonna pause here for a second. If I get what seems like angrier than usual, it's because I had live-in nannies for the entirety of my life because my mom was a single mom who was traveling all the time, sometimes for weeks at a time. It angers me when parents trust someone and give that responsibility to someone that most of the time, at least my mom, thoroughly vetted and then they do shit like this because I'm not gonna get started, I'm really not. A former Florida nanny was sentenced to 20 years behind bars after sexually abusing a young boy in her care beginning when he was just 11 years old and later having his baby. Marissa Mowry, 28, received the sentence Wednesday after reaching a plea deal with prosecutors to plead guilty to sexual battery charges against her, the Tampa Bay Times reports. When she was 22, Mary was hired by a Florida family to serve as a live-in nanny and quickly became an extension of their family. I could so easily start screaming and crying at the same time. I think what hits me the most, yikes, goosebumps. When I'm severely disgusted or cringing, I get goosebumps. The thing that bothers me about this is that it's obviously an abuse of power that goes without saying, but the additional layer of becoming as if you're part of the family, because in reality, you live there, you might even go on vacation with them if they need, you know, a nanny while they're on vacation. So there are all these responsibilities that they trust you with to the point that you're an extension of the family and then you do this and of course abusing children is heinous no matter what I'm just saying the extra layer of familial connection or whatever you want to call it to me makes it more disgusting I thought of her almost as a second daughter the victim's mother Nadine Campbell said after the sentence according to Spectrum Bay News 9 Mari had been recommended to the family by a relative who had also used her services see now that concerns me because as we have seen on this channel a lot of of the times these creepy ass pedophiles are repeat offenders. I haven't heard many cases where there's just one victim and one is already terrible, mind you. But I'm concerned about the kids she was looking after before, and I hope that that gets looked into as well. What Campbell didn't know was that Maori had begun having a sexual relationship with her 11 year old son. Sexual relationship to me implies consent, like two adults can have a sexual relationship. It just seems weird to me to not use the actual terminology to say she was raping him. That's what it is. Mari had begun a sexual relationship with her 11-year-old son who had once loved playing Legos and riding bike. Authorities said she sexually assaulted the 11-year-old at least 15 times over several months before getting pregnant and having his baby in 2014, according to the Tampa Bay Times. See, and this makes me feel like she genuinely is disconnected from reality, and that's not an excuse because there's no excuse excuse for this, but I just don't know what kind of person who lives in the real world where we all are would think it's okay to rape a child and then would also think it's even better, it's a great idea to have a child from a child. How would you even explain that to anyone? Can you imagine someone asks, oh, who's the father? An 11 year old that you took advantage of? To me, this just says she really doesn't think there's anything wrong with this, or she's mind-numbingly stupid, or she's mind-numbingly perverted. Probably all of the above, honestly. At the time, Campbell said she believed the father of the baby was Maori's boyfriend, but three years after the relationship began, her son came forward and a DNA test would later prove her young son was the baby's father. And she had a boyfriend on top of everything. We're talking about a child that was 11, Campbell said according to the local paper, not even a teenager, 11. And I mean, even if you were a teenager, if you were 13, it would still be as inappropriate in my perspective. The abuse forever altered the course of her son's life. At 17, he's now a fully engaged father, taking his five-year-old to school each day before he heads to school himself. It's also limited his social life and meant he had to put dating on hold because who wants to date a 17 year old who has a five year old, his mother said. The teen's family is also helping to raise the young child, but P Campbell called her son really awesome as a parent and one of the most amazing dads you'll meet. If he ever does try dating, like the mother said, when it comes time for him to explain to people that he has a son, that must be difficult. I can't imagine it being easy to explain to people how you're 17 and have a five year old son, right? However, I'm glad that he's a good father. I'm honestly impressed by how responsible he's being because being 17 and taking care of a child and going to school 
Sounds like a lot. It has not ruined his life, but it's changed his life, she said according to the local paper. Maori, a mother of three, was arrested in 2017 on multiple accounts of sexual battery of a victim under the age of 12 and sexual battery while in custodial authority. Campbell now believes the woman who she had once thought of as a surrogate daughter is a predator and urged other parents to be wary of who they let into their homes. Know the people your children are around, she said, according to Spectrum News. Investigate everything. You are your child's biggest advocate. So that's where that article ended. However, I wanted a little bit more closure, so I went to another website. Everything will be linked down below. And it says, following her 20-year prison sentence, Maori is required to complete a decade of sex offender probation. She will also spend the remainder of her life on Florida's sex offender registry, and as a result, will have to adhere to a series of strict conditions. Campbell urged parents to be attentive to their children and mindful that women can be sexual predators. We don't think about females being predators usually, she said. I didn't and it cost me. And this is why I get frustrated when the law goes easier on women because there's this kind of perception that women can't be killers, they can't be rapists, they can't do anything of horrendous because it's just so unbelievable that a dainty little woman would do it. But the reality is that monsters come in all shapes and forms, women, men, whatever, they exist. So the fact that people don't expect it is really what's dangerous, right? And in this situation, I'm not blaming the mother. I don't know what the rest of the circumstances are, but what I'm saying is someone shouldn't be discounted as for sure not dangerous just because of their gender because shit like this happens. One thing I did want to touch on and I know that this is like the methodology my mom used to find live-in nannies or babysitters generally was to go through agencies. Now, I don't know if they still exist because I obviously haven't had a nanny in a while. I'm 26. Anyway, what she would do was go through agencies where nannies would have to apply, have recommendations. I think they, I'm pretty sure they did multiple background checks. So they were really very, very intensive. So it wasn't just word of mouth. Oh yeah, that person's great. It was really black on white paper. What do we know about this person? I mean, people can always get through the cracks, but I think at least that's an extra precaution. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you guys have tips for parents who are looking for babysitters, please leave them down below. I don't know. Someone might come across it and find it helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and let's get right into the fan art.